<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, it is a long while so sort of, since I was in primary school. But you know, there's some things I can remember very clearly. And we had to read a novel one time, and it was a novel that people were really caught up with. Now, I don't remember the title, I don't remember the author, but I remember a story from this novel. And the story was centred on a stagecoach. Now, being a young man, I was involved, I loved things with wheels and anything like that. And there were these two people riding along on top of a stagecoach, the driver and someone riding, as they call it, a shotgun on the stagecoach. There were passengers in the back, but it was freezing cold. That, you know, when you're racked up, we haven't had that for a little while, but it'll come again, let me tell you. These people were racked up, and so the fellow who was riding shotgun said, I want to warm up, so he reached down and grabbed his trumpet, and he started blowing the trumpet expecting beautiful music to come out. But it was frozen, it wouldn't work. So he gave up on that idea. Anyway, after some time they reached their destination, which was an inn for the night, they were stopping on the journey. And he thought, I won't leave the trumpet out on the stagecoach, I'll take it in. They all walked into the inn, sat by the fire, and just put the trumpet down, and they called them for a meal. The meal was ready, so they went and sat down to eat their meal, and suddenly this beautiful music began to waft through the room. And everyone looked around to find out where this music was coming from. They couldn't find the source. And then suddenly someone discovered that as the trumpet was thawing out, the music was coming out. <laughs> A tall story. <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to tell you a story that's anything but a tall story. It's a true story about a short man, so it was about Zacchaeus. It's the opposite to a tall story. And Zacchaeus, of course, you know the background of Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector, not just a tax collector, but the chief, the big boss, in Jericho. Now, Jericho, just to give you a bit of background, was on the main north-south corridor of Israel. And it was a very vibrant community. It had a, a lot of activity, particularly around the financial world. There were lots of sources of revenue, should I say, for Zacchaeus. And, of course, he was despised, was not appreciated at all. Now, I'm going to stop the story there. I'm going to tell you something else. Hold that. Yesterday, I spent the day in Adelaide at a conference. John McElroy, who many of us know, most of us would know John McElroy, who heads up the Southern Cross Association of Churches, the group which we sit under. John happened to be in Adelaide with a, a fellow from America, from New York, and there was a series of seminars right around the nation. A fellow called John Kelly. He was in his 80s, but spoke vibrantly and uh, just full of life. And he was talking about the importance of any church, any group within the church, that applies to every group within our church, the importance of it having a missional function. That was the focus. So we need to have a missional function. What's the missional function? To proclaim Jesus, to just learn about Jesus, to grow in Jesus, and to proclaim Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life. Why am I telling you that? Well, I sat down at my chair and a fellow came and sat next to me and he didn't say anything, but I began a conversation with him. And I asked him a little bit about himself and his wife, and he got a young guy, a lovely young man, and he told me that he was an accountant. There you go, Mike. Wow. <laughs> and uh, he was talking about his business, he said, I, I actually am no longer in business, I actually work for an org organisation now. And I said, where do you work? And he said, oh, you don't want to know. Well, I said, I do, I wouldn't have asked the question otherwise, he said, the taxation department. <laughs> I think when he tells people, he loses friends. But he was a lovely guy, great Christian guy. And I said, we need Christians everywhere. And I don't have any problems with the taxation department. If you pay your taxes, you don't have trouble. That's what it boils down to. No one wants to pay more than they have to. Now, that's, that's just part of the story, because I'm, this is background to what I'm talking about with Zacchaeus. He didn't have any friends at all. But he had a problem, you see. 
because he was the chief of all tax collectors, he had this, I don't know, he probably didn't have an accounting degree, he had this one for you at the taxation department, two for me attitude. He just gathered it in. If you actually go through the uh, background of the scripture, along with some other passages that you might find bits and pieces here and there, he was the wealthiest man in all of Jericho. If he wasn't at the top, he was close. So, and he hadn't earned it by honest means. That was the problem. He had earned it by dishonesty and people hated him with a passion. That's the background of who Zacchaeus was. We all know that. In fact, you know, as, our, as we grew up through Sunday school, I think, well, our children probably know more about the story than we do. To be honest, it's one of the favourite stories. It comes from Luke's Gospel. Let me read it to you in Luke 19. Sorry, Mark, I should have told you about this earlier. But Luke 19. Are you sure he wasn't a banker, Rob? No, he was a tax collector. Okay. Right? Luke 19, 1 to 13, I'm reading. 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector in the region and had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road. But Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, come down quick. I must be a guest in your home today. So Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor. And if I've cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Now, I don't know whether you actually get the impact of this story. We've heard it so many times over the years that we sometimes lose the impact of this story. Yes, he had a big bank account. Yes, he was the chief tax collector. Yes, he had lots of stuff around him. He had all the money could buy. But perhaps the tall story in this is that people thought he was beyond redemption. Perhaps the tall story in this is that this little guy who was looking at him quite insignificant, very much despised, that he could ever have a relationship with Jesus. Is that a tall story? What would you have thought if you had known Zacchaeus? Where would you have thought? What would you have thought about that? Let me tell you in a, perhaps a little more clearly way. You see, the crowd was beginning to gather as Jesus was coming down the street. I remind you that we're in the time of Lent in our preparation for Easter. I remind you that as Jesus is coming toward Jerusalem, this is part of his journey, he's coming toward Jerusalem, he knows what's in front of him, he knows what he has to face. People are flocking around him, excited to see him. Why are they excited to see him? Because they've heard about what he can do. Miracles. There might be something in it for me. Zacchaeus heard about Jesus too. The grapevine worked pretty well back in those days. No mobile phones, no emails, no radio, no TV. But the word got through to Zacchaeus. And he comes to have a look. He just wants to have a glimpse at Jesus. Have you ever asked the question, why would Zacchaeus want to see Jesus. Well, I'm not, I was wondering about this the other day. Could it be because he had a friend by the name of Levi? Or at least knew about Levi? In fact, Levi probably was Jesus. Levi, of course, another name for Levi was Matthew. Who was Matthew? A tax collector. One of his colleagues, you know, people of like minds uh, that usually meet together and talk about what's going on. 
So probably the word had spread that there was something special about Jesus. I don't know. I'm just wondering. It's a good question. But whatever, Zacchaeus had heard about Jesus. And he wanted to check out Jesus for himself. And you know, I can just picture Zacchaeus coming up in a great big wall of people, all standing on tippy toes, looking at Jesus. And being a little short fellow, he couldn't see. He probably tried to get through the crowd, but you know, this tax collector, we're not going to let him through. Why would you let him in? What would Jesus want to see him for? We know what he's like, and it's not very nice. Why would we let him in to see Jesus? But he was quite a resourceful young man, or well, I don't know he's young, but he was quite a resourceful fellow, climbed up into the sycamore tree. Now, if you read a bit about sycamore trees, some of them had low branches, so he may have just climbed up into a branch. But whatever, he was in this sycamore tree in Jericho. Jericho, as I said, was uh, on this corridor north to south. It was just about six miles west of the Jordan River. And on the western side of it was the big rugged mountain range, which we talked about just last week, where Jesus went up into the wilderness. Remember his temptation we spoke about last week? And today he's down on the flat, coming into Jericho, passing through on his way to Jerusalem. And here's Zacchaeus hiding, if you like, but looking out of the tree, through the leaves, through the branches, at Jesus. And here comes Jesus, and suddenly he stops. He looks up into the tree and says, Zacchaeus, I want to come and have lunch with you. Or words to that effect. We're going to stop there. Firstly, Jesus knew him and called him by name. You know, that's terribly important for us to hold on to that because no matter where we are, no matter how insignificant we think we are, doesn't matter whether you've got lots of friends around you or, like Zacchaeus, no friends around you, this is not a tall story. Jesus was for real. He called him by name and called him out of that tree and spoke into his life. None of us are beyond the reach of Jesus. That's good news. That is fantastic news. If you read the scriptures, and I did read them a moment ago, you might have picked up, but the people began grumbling. The crowd thought, why would you talk to that guy? If Jesus is this prophet that he claims to be, that we all know that he is, he would know who this Zacchaeus is. That he's a crook, he's a cheat. There's not one of us here in this crowd he hasn't taken down and ripped us off. I might just stop again. Do you know that in those days, the taxation rate, anyone know what it was? About 10 to 15 percent. Do you know what we're paying? Or it's only more. <laughs> we're paying a lot more tax than they were, but it's different sets of circumstances. Yeah. Oop. I heard an accountant speak. Do you know, we need to pay our tax. That's the mark of who we are. You know, if you talk to people in business, some of the worst people to deal with are Christians because they like to get it cheap or not want to pay the full rate. We need to be honest in our dealings, in all that we do. The mark of a Christian is someone who's been changed by Jesus. The mark of a Christian is someone who's honest and trustworthy and who will pay the due. What's due them? What did Jesus say about money? Render? What is Caesar? Under Caesar, that which is Caesar's. Under God, that which is God. In other words, Pay your bills. I'm not saying you're not paying your bills. I'm not saying that at all. But I, I just I think this is a reminder of the story of the need for integrity in our business dealings. The need to be true to who we are, are and who we're called to be. Really important. We need to be true. We need to be honest. Because there's that old song that we used to sing, they'll know we're Christians by our love 
and by the way we respond. I think that day in Jericho, all eyes were on Zacchaeus. And in our day, all eyes are on us in the way that we respond to circumstances. Going back to the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, as the scriptures tell us, he just sends the excitement that Jesus has stopped under the tree, called him by name and called him down and he comes down and with excitement takes Jesus to his home. Now we can imagine that there's a meal there because Zacchaeus would have had servants, would have had all that he needed to be able to feed Jesus. But something happened there. We're not actually privy to what happened, but we see the results. We see that Zacchaeus' heart is changed. We see that Zacchaeus comes out of that meeting with Jesus, that luncheon with Jesus, he comes out a changed man. Zacchaeus is severely not severely, totally impacted by Jesus. Totally overwhelmed by what Jesus says to him and who Jesus is. So much so that we actually can read into that last few sentences in that Gospel of Luke, chapter 19. Zacchaeus repents of his sin. What's his sin? He's stolen from people that he shouldn't have stolen from. Taken more than he should have taken. And he says, I'm going to give half of my belongings to the poor. Immediately, straight off the top, I'm going to give half of it away. And if I have taken money or goods from people whom I shouldn't have, I'm going to repay them four times. It's that restitution, that putting right, which was wrong. I tell you, we can learn a lot from Zacchaeus. But I just want to go back to that grumbling of the people. You know, when we see people who we don't like, we think, how come God is favouring them? How come they're doing so well? How come they're where they are? How come I was overlooked and they weren't? What's going on? This life seems unfair at times, isn't it? You imagine all those faithful people standing there in the street in Jericho, probably faithful people of God. And Jesus talks to them, I suppose. He walks past them, maybe greets them or taps them on the shoulder, rubs the heads of the little children. But that's all. And then he goes to this sinner, this cheat, this crook, this thug. And he says, I'm coming to your home today. I can understand why they would grumble. I think there would have been more worthy people in that crowd that Jesus could have gone to visit. But there was a plan and a purpose in what Jesus did. A life was changed. Does it mean the others missed out? No. They didn't miss out. They might have thought they did at that moment. But the reality is, it just showed the abundance, the enormous amount of grace that God has, perhaps for the unlovable, for those who are unworthy. Well, who of us is worthy? Who in this room can say, I've done it all right? Not many. Not any. So that grace is available for you and me. That's a beautiful story. The abundant grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is there for all. Just one other thing I'll pick up out of that story, and then I'll just about finish. This is what I want to say. I'll read it from the scripture, because I just want to get this bit right. Read it from chapter 19. Just the last couple of verses. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save those who are lost. What's the son of Abraham? One of the chosen? Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Thank you, my Lisa. Someone who's set apart as a child of God. 
Someone who is a true Israelite, if you like. Someone who is, has made it. Not because of who they are, not because of what they've done, but because of who they are. Because they were born into this family. How are we born into a family? How are we born again? We recognise that we're sinners. We recognise that God's Son, Jesus Christ, came into this world to save sinners. All of us are sinners and need salvation through Jesus. We recognise that we come to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm not worthy, but you make me worthy. Lord, will you come into my life and change me? And grace and forgiveness and new opportunities to start again begin from that moment when we are born again. Oh, that's good news. And that's what I get from the story of Zacchaeus. You see, it's not a talk story. It's a true story. It's a story of love, a story of redemption, it's a story of new beginnings, a story of hope. If Zacchaeus can have a relationship with Jesus, what great news for you and me. Will you join me in prayer? Let's pray. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for the word that we've heard tonight. We thank you that through Jesus you offer us life and life in abundance. And our prayer for ourselves, for our church community, for our families, for our nation, is that we would just take a hold of these truths of Scripture and accept Jesus as Lord and Saviour. Lord, our desire is that this nation would be reformed and turned back to you so that we would be true in all that we do, in all that we are, but most of all, that we would know whose we are. For we pray in Jesus' wonderful name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the presence of his Holy Spirit, be with us tonight and for always. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm almost finished. But if you feel that you like prayer tonight, Make sure that you chat with myself or Elaine or somebody else here. Don't go home without knowing deep in here that you are right with God through Jesus. You're not unreachable. You're not forgotten about. Jesus calls us by name. He stops right where we are. Not only does he call us by name, but he calls us out of our circumstances to himself and he wants to come with us and share with us good news take that into your week but if you would like prayer don't leave here without seeing him blessings and have a wonderful week